Okay, welcome back everybody. Um, quick video to address a question that came up in email because I didn't know what the hell the guy was talking about because it took me a little bit. So you know who you are, so now we're, we're, you're gonna relive this on video. So guy sends an email and he wants to know about the um, uh, scope covers that uh, you know I've got on some of the rifles and I'm like Butler Creek that's you know who we use I think there's other people out there but Butler Creek they're not just to make sure yeah Butler Creek and um, they're not super fancy but they are out there and you know everybody uses them and I'm like you know Butler Creek and so there's some back and forth and I don't really think about it and I I'm talking objective sizes and I'm thinking that's probably what you know what he's gonna be interested in and then he, he's basically, he's going to Butler Creek's website or, and looking on online um, parts websites. And what he's actually, I have something to point with, I guess I don't have anything. He's actually asking about the ARD or the kill flash that's in this to see if I, oh, you know what? I don't even know if I can get it on film here. Within the, um, okay, see the honeycomb in there? That is an ARD, technically anti-reflection device, I believe is how they call it, or commonly known as a kill flash. And so that, let's see if I can, I've been taking this off in years. This threads on the front of the objective. And so you can see some honeycomb there. And so I thought he was asking about the Butler Creek and he's asking about the kill flashes. And, um, I don't know a whole lot about kill flashes. I mean, I know what they're supposed to do. And um, in general, for civilians, I really don't think they have that much of an application. Uh, there is one exception that I will illustrate here in a minute. Um, you know, I look at kill flashes. First, you know what, let me say this. This scope here, this is a Schmidt & Bender PM2. This is actually a pretty rare optic. It is the it is exact copy of the scope that was made for the United States Marine Corps sniper, sniper program, except it doesn't have the markings. So it's even got the, um, uh, who, is it Premier reticle? It's a mil dot reticle made by Premier. Uh, before Premier, I think, um, yanked it from Schmidt and Bender. So um, this is pretty, pretty, you know, pretty rare scope. I got this years ago out of Virginia. And um, it came with, because it's a spec, it's a military scope, came with an ARD. I don't really care. came with it. That's fine. It's on there. It does what it does. So, just threads on. It's kind of like a uh, sunshade. So, the idea of an ARD, I mean, this is pretty obvious to probably 99% of you, is if you're set up somewhere and you know, you're pointing a gun at somebody and if the sun has the right angle, uh, light source can come in, bounce off the objective and, and send a flash or a, a reflection, um, you know, possibly to somebody else, you know, if you're hidden or, uh, you know, you're uh, in your ghillie suit or, or, or laid up somewhere, give away your position. And there are people that legitimately have a need for that. Uh, in particular, you know, Officer Mike, you know, you see somebody his stuff on on our website officer mike i i don't even have to look i guarantee he's probably got kill flashes on most of his call out gear um i think most people today obsess on stuff like this because it's tactical or you know if it's good enough for the military it's good enough for me you know it came with this gun it came, it came with this optic yeah fine i'll put it on i don't care um i don't think it's hurt the light transmission for me on a practical level through the objective, but there is no doubt, I don't even have to look at the stats, there is no doubt, if you put a kill flash on your optic, you are losing some light transmission. There's just no way that, you know, you're not. Now, with that being said, if you're like an audio, the best way I can describe it is kind of like the um, stereo guys. If you're an audiophile, and you can listen to something and you can tell the difference between, you know, one type of audio file format versus another and, you know, you're, you've got nerd ears, um, you know, that kind of stuff makes, you know, makes a difference to you. Along the same lines, you'll see a lot of people 
they can get into glass and they can look at stuff and they their eyes they have the ability to just really tell the difference in how things look um notoriously like in in the past you would see guys that were really into it like they like swarovski glass you know the way i perceive it um is super crisp and they just love the colors and and how and how the light works so um this objective for me it doesn't make a difference i don't my vision's not that good my my visual uh uh sensitivity i just i can't function on that level i put it on it's there realistically you know i'm sure it does some good it's cool to have it because it came with the scope i don't sweat it um now with that being said there is one example or one situation where in theory a civilian could really benefit from having one of these and so I guess you could say this possibly in the Midwest, but I think of it more being out West. So like in Montana, Wyoming. And so you're set up somewhere and you're trying to get close to, uh, to a deer or some kind of animal and you've got glass on it and it's on the next hill and you're trying to get within say 400 yards of it. And all of a sudden you're not close enough to make any noise and you haven't, nobody's really moving. And if you honestly believe that you didn't do anything to warrant all the animals to suddenly start looking your way. If you look back on that situation, it may be that your objective, you know, sent a flash across them. Kind of like, you know, if you're out driving in traffic and on a sunny day, you'll see flashes of light bounce off of stuff because it's reflecting off of windshields and, and glass and cars. And the same thing can happen in theory in, um, you know, in hunting situations as well. I, I think of it more as a, more as a um, something out west, you know, someone who's done a little bit of hunting. I don't really think in the Midwest, you know, I mean, you're taking our shots here like 80 yards max. I mean, you can set up somewhere and do 100 yards, but, you know, you're, the angles are, you know, if you're in a tree stand and the angles and the engagement times are so fast that, you know, I doubt the, the, uh, the, the light, you're setting up the light to, you know, even be an issue. So, with that being said, if you were somebody that you were obsessed on having a kill flash or, you know, became an issue, you know, go to your go to your grandma's house and get some pantyhose and you could easily just throw some pantyhose over it and, um, you know, band-aid it up. But I don't know how you're going to get pantyhose and a scope cover. I mean, I don't know how all that would work. So, I mean, my point is, you know, this isn't that hard. It's not rocket science. You, if you really have a need for it, and you want to try to solve the problem, it's pretty easy to do. Um, you don't need to obsess on it and spend, you know, whatever the money is to put kill flashes on every one of your objective lenses or, good Lord, even on your red dots. If it comes with them, great. I think that's awesome. But I, I don't go out and try to buy kill flashes for stuff. And if you're super, super OCD um, about reflecting light onto your proposed targets, you know, and you've got kill flashes and all your red dots, but you know, you're, uh, you, you've got weapons mounted lights with big objective lenses on them, you know, you may want to consider looking at those as well. So, I mean, you can get, you can nerd out down the rabbit hole and spend a lot of money buying a lot of stuff you don't need. And I think the kill flash area is one I think you need to be a little careful on. So, Yes, that is a kill flash. That is not a Butler Creek scope cover. My mistake. I apologize for not understanding the question initially. Um, if you want to see pictures of me shooting uh, this gun with this kill flash, um, just go to our website, john1911.com. That's J-O-H-N-1911.com. Remember, it's all about shooting guns and having fun. Everybody, have a good day.